just to start off, um, how did you, what was your early influences? How did you get into music and what were your sort of first records you bought or first records you listened to? The first my records I was, was The Monkeys. The Monkeys, which was what we bought at uh, Duck, Duckhead School Jumble Style. <laughs> we never had a record player, but we used to look at the covers and wonder what they sounded like. We knew they must have sounded because we knew it was a TV program. That was it. They got me then to nick me a wall out like Mike Nesbitt. <laughs> was that, um, so that was you thought, like, after the records come out? So, uh, like, yeah, as well as in the Jumble Style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, where, where, where your first record that you went out and sold? The first record I actually went out and bought properly because it was a child record was the 16s by the Sweet. Oh, brilliant. That's been sweet thing. And then the first album I bought was. Um, I think it was either Yellow Brick Road or. What destination put about the Yellow Brick Road? And all things have passed. So all, they were all really dear albums to start by, and I thought, yeah, well, they're all like double albums and box things. It's never going to catch on. They're, they're so expensive. You didn't know that you could buy just a normal album for like 50 pence or so. Yeah. No, I want a box set thing. And still, still, still no record of that. Still no record of that. Still didn't have a record of no, that. No, no. I had a great started Started off well. You know. Just, just the spines alone was three inches wide. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, so, um? How did, how did you, you sort of got into the when you left school? You, you joined, you went to Pecker, didn't you? Working as a man or something? Post, 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 And during the lunch break, you had to fill in for the receptionist. All right. Where I met Matthew Corbett. Matthew Corbett. Yeah, we crept in and put the sooty up above the <laughs> thing. Which was the dumb one, don't the other speakers it. Should have brought that sweet or is he sweet? Yeah, and like to look over the thing and there he was with his puppets. Oh mate, well he was side the decker. Yeah, he was tried to, oh. um, but because he sooty was silent. <laughs> wasn't gonna get very far. And they signed Isla Sinclair instead, I remember. And she oh she the bird the, the show early used to do. Yeah, she was like a, a, a hymn singer, wasn't she? Oh right, yeah. So no, Scottish. so even though I went to record label, it wasn't really um, a hotbed of music. But how did how did you get started there? How did you get to Gary Crowley was leaving. Right. And <coughs> we looked very similar. <laughs> Skinny and mods and um because one mod was going and the the staff all loved Gary. Uh, he brought me up there and said, "Look, he looks the same as me. Why can't he just become yeah, my job?" And they went, "Yeah, it's great. When you're leaving, they went, he went Friday. So when you start on Monday, then that was it. Oh, really? Just because we looked the same." And he went down to the enemy, then the then the other end of Carnaby Street, and Beckham was up the other end of Carnaby Street. Right. And then the same thing repeated itself there when Gary was there. Gary replaced Danny Baker, who was the receptionist, come do everything at the enemy. Yeah. And he became a bit more. Journalistic variety after the sniffing glue thing, because he, he both sniffing glue with half Harry. And then Gary got further up the thing, and then I was, I came there for a little while, but then I went back to Decca just in time for its collapse, which was, <laughs> which was a good move. So, how, how did you know Gary and Danny? Met, I knew Danny from a pub I used to live above when I was first left home, which is the film on in Burnley, and he was a bit of a face down there, and they used to DJ and stuff, because he worked at a record shop in Sarge. Right. So he had every record going, so therefore he did a bit of DJing in the local pubs. So I knew him, and he, he, was, he was like most glamorous person in Burnley. <laughs> he, 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 had a, he worked at a record shop. Oh, I mean, and Gary, I met in the street. I met Gary walking past Liberty's. Yeah. Yeah, he had a path, and I had a path. My mum was full of Nick shirts, which I've nicked from an agency job I was working at. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wasn't. Awesome. <laughs> it was like, you're, you're, a, yeah, you're a mod, you know, a mod, and then uh, we went and had a coffee, <laughs> maybe a lager, yeah. uh, and he said, I'm leaving, I work at Decca Records, but I'm leaving Friday, and why don't you take up my job, and it was a simple, Oh, really, what, the same week? Same as that, same yeah. week, yeah, oh.